city streets become catch-alls for the persons who are left idle. Those who lack the education and training necessary for success in an industrial society which has increasingly little use for the unskilled worker. The specter of future joblessness helps to swell the high school dropout rolls, which reach more than 50% of school-age youth in some sections of the city. Moving into the inner city has its discouraging aspect. We have great big sewer rats. I mean, they're much larger than the ordinary house rats. They come through the ceilings and through the our bathroom wall. And that's completely caved in. We had leaks and the ceilings and the walls, which the walls are still very bad, and the ceilings are still cracked. The city is dense with children. Pavement becomes a playground. Within the inner city's confines, even in a child's world, the harsh reality of life circumscribed by barriers of race and class is visible. For some, the question of the separation of race and class within the metropolis is rarely raised. Others deny that barriers exist. The mayor of Chicago. We have no ghettos in Chicago at all. Total dilapidated buildings in Chicago are lower than any large metropolitan area in the United States. So we have no ghetto and we have no Negro ghetto. Those who would bridge the city's barriers are alarmed by the most extreme expression of resentment yet to emerge from the inner city. The black Muslim movement. We want every black man and woman to have the freedom to accept or reject being separated from the slave master's children. Right. If there are no provisions made to separate our people on some of this good faith that we can call our own. Then send us back where we came from. Right. 